and so here's what I'm going to have to do. I, I have a, I purchased the 500 seat plan, but obviously it's capped us here at 101 is where it's capping us, right? And so what I'm doing is I'm going to have to simulcast you into my go my Omnovia room. So what you can't see there is you've got over a hundred people in GoToWebinar, and you've got almost a hundred people over. In, eh, maybe not. Maybe it's seventy-ish people over in uh, Omnovia. And so okay. I'm going to have to simulcast you into both rooms, and so I may have you test. So I'm going to stop projecting on my end, and I'm going to ask you to screen project if you would. Okay. And we're doing a lot of this on the fly. So my apologies if you're just joining us. Uh, we were in a trade all the way to right up to the end of this, and we've had a very this is a very popular turnout, and we've had a little bit of a of a capacity kind of issue here today. And so it's one of those things, right? Where it is what it is. All right. So uh, Bruce, I'm going to put your screen here in front of people. And then there's Bruce's screen. All right, so if you are in the Omnovia room, uh, you can you should be able to see Bruce's screen. And I like your charts; those look pretty slick, dude. Um, the so you guys, can you just let me know if you can see all of this in the in the Omnovia room? Can you see all of this? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to have to do one more thing. It's a little bit uh, engineering on the fly here. And so Bruce, give me just a second. Yeah, no problem. All right, Bruce, can you say something? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you guys hear Bruce in the Omnovia room? They just say testing, testing. Uh, Bruce, if you would, just testing, testing. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. All right. We're squared away. That didn't take long. That wasn't bad. <laughs> wow. Yeah, what a mess. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. That, uh, yeah, sounds like uh, some sort of like NASA technology or something. Uh, yeah, hooking we, up, uh, we've got some stuff going on here. So, all right, so I'm going to put the microphone back. By the way, Bruce is uh, Bruce is in charge of the education and uh, the uh, education over at VLOX Pro. He does uh, weekly, like uh, uh, daily webinars, right? Don't you do yeah. daily webinars? Yeah, daily okay. webinars, yeah. Yeah, so Bruce does a daily webinar. Uh, over there, so if you end up picking up the tool, um, which we hope you do, and there'll be a link for you here um, at the end of this, and uh, they do, you know, lots of good education. There's so much to do with this tool. I told you guys in the past that it's a Ferrari, and I drive it like a Yugo, right? And so um, it's a really super good tool. Bruce is going to spend the next hour or so kind of going through the details with you. He can see your questions um, in the GoToWebinar room. Um, I'm going to monitor the questions and the Omnovia room. And so what we're going to do, if this is okay with you, Bruce, I'll just hold all the questions till the end since we're trying to do this on two platforms. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, so uh, uh, that, that would probably be best. Uh, okay. So, and... so having said that, um, everybody, this is Bruce. Bruce, this is everybody. And over to you, sir. Okay, great. No, thank you very much for having me, uh, Jason. Uh, it's a pleasure, and um, uh, we'll, um, you know, it's nice to have the opportunity to uh, to show this uh, this tool to you guys. I mean, uh, uh, to be honest, uh, you know, with my background, um, you know, I, I've been a trader for about uh, about nine or ten years now uh, from the retail side, uh, and um, uh, came across this tool, and I was just a client like like anyone else. Uh, and um, uh, basically, it was a friend of, of mine uh, and myself, and uh, and we reached out to um, uh, a, a guy working at Bookmap at that at that time, uh, and had a few questions. And um, and you know, I guess uh, you know he uh, he said, well, there's an opportunity if you if you wanted to join the team. And uh, uh, you know, I took to this uh, immediately. Um, and you know why um, it was because I mean it, it's um, it's kind of funny. Uh, I, I have a, a you know pretty pretty funny story here. Is it's to me there was this kind of uh, moment, and I know it's kind of kind of corny, but um, uh, you know when I saw this tool, um, it it reminded me of like uh, uh, Steve Jobs uh, uh, seeing the uh, uh, the desktop um, computer desktop 
uh, for from uh, uh, Xerox Park, um, you know, back in the uh, 70s, and he and he immediately knew that within five years, every computer was going to be based on uh, on that desktop uh, in one form or another, uh, and um, the transparency that you can see with this tool, uh, I had the same kind of moment. It's like wow, okay, well, everything's going to be like this in the future. Uh, th this kind of transparency is going to be demanded by people. Uh, and um, uh, so let me let me get into that and, and exactly what this is and, and what this is showing, because it, it looks like it's a lot. Uh, and I'm going to simplify it here, and I'm going to show you that it's actually very, very simple, objective, clean and clear view of the marketplace. Uh, and... Um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off all the volume, okay, um, and um, or I can do it here. Uh, and then I'm also going to do the heat map. Uh, I'm going to also uh, uh, take off, okay. Now, uh, so there's three sections here in book map, right? Uh, let me go. Let me go. I'm sorry. Let me go over to oil here since that's uh, uh, what you guys are looking at. Um, okay. All right. Okay, so there's three sections here in the chart, okay? Uh, this is the historical section here, all right? It's the bulk of it. Uh, and what you're looking at is just historical best bid and offer. And that's it, okay? It's, uh, it's clean and simple. Uh, and um, uh, then there's this window here. This is a kind of vertical-shaped window, uh, rectangle. Um, and uh, this, these two dashed lines, this is the current market, okay? This is the best bid and offer right now. Right, and then this number here is the last traded volume on the best bidder offer. All right, so that's that's two thirds of the uh, of the view here. Now the 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 last uh, third here, uh, all this is um, is um, uh, uh, the current order book, the limit order book. So this is your dome. All right, now you know a lot of domes also have volume profiles or um, uh, other data, and, and we have. Um, many different ways of looking at the data, not just through volume profiles. You can look at trade uh, trade profiles, you can look at quotes, counter profiles, quotes, delta, uh, make your custom notes, et cetera, all right? So um, uh, anyway, uh, so what you're looking at here is just the dome, all right? So this is in the current dome, let's zoom in a little bit, all right? Uh, and you can see here that uh, what I have is the best bid and offer here, okay? Here's your price ladder. Okay, and then this is the the, um, the 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 depth here on the offer up to this white line, right? And then this is the depth here on the bid down to this white line here, okay? And then you can see I have another current order book column here, and this is just a graphical representation in bars of of the liquidity, okay? So graphically, I know immediately where that high liquidity is, right? So I can see here 155 because it's got the biggest bar. Right? I can see them just popping in here at 54.40 uh, with 100. Well, they just pulled it, but um, yeah, now they're back. All right, so they're adding and pulling here, liquidity. Um, at uh, at uh, pretty pretty aggressive here, one tick away from the from the best offer. Okay. Um, so so anyway, uh, that's just the 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 two columns here. Okay. Uh, now uh, I'm going to add on the volume. Okay. Now, what you're looking at in Bookmap with the volume dots uh, is the transactions that took place on the historical best bid and offer, okay, and that's it. Uh, and uh, we use the aggressor classification of volume. And uh, what do I mean by that? All right, let me just zoom in a little bit here, and I'll show you. Okay, uh, here's your best offer at this point, and these are green dots on the best offer. These are market buy orders. So aggressor classification. Uh, means that uh, it's a market buy. Okay, they crossed the spread. They wanted uh, aggressively into this market as a, on the buy side, so they pressed the market buy button and they took liquidity off of the best offer. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now the best uh, um, bid, bid here and uh, the red dots is the, these are market sells. Okay, same story. Now you can see here that uh, a lot happens in these markets very quickly. Uh, and um, uh, you can see this um, uh, volume dot here uh, is a pie chart, and it has uh, both buying and selling in it, okay? And um, 
Uh, that's because uh, uh, so many trades uh, happened here so quickly uh, that we're just giving you the overall delta of it. Okay, so you can see that this is the majority of it here is uh, aggressive buying. Okay, about three quarters of it. Right. Now we can give you the numbers of this as well. So you can you can hover over this area uh, and you can see the date, the time, what was on the bid at this price level, and the volume that traded at this price level. Okay, now I can zoom into this level and I start to break apart all these individual trades. Okay, all right down to the point where you know we're looking at micro microsecond level. I'm sorry, um, millisecond level here, uh, but it, there's still more trades in here. Right now we're down to uh, microsecond level. Okay, so you can see uh, that uh, exactly what occurred here uh, in these markets. Okay, we're not we're not tick based. We're not uh, we don't aggregate the data. We we take each individual discrete event uh, from the market and uh, we'll plot it within Bookmap. So you're getting a very very objective view of what occurred at these uh, uh, the these very very low time frames. Um, you know. So uh, uh, now as I zoom back out, note that uh, what we'll do is this little area here. Okay. Is I, we just make it a bigger dot, right, to to represent all those transactions that took place here. Okay, so um, uh, that's uh, that's that. I mean, that's uh, if I continue to zoom out. Now we haven't aggregated the data. Uh, 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 all the data points are still there, but we've just aggregated it visually or graphically for you. Okay, so if I hover over this, I can see that uh, volume was 61. Okay, overall. Right, and that's what can be helpful for you, uh, unless you're trading uh, algorithmically. Okay, so the um, uh, the volume uh, in this area here, we're giving you kind of the best of both worlds. We're showing you exactly um, where it took place, like a footprint chart, and how much, uh, and the the classification of it, and the overall delta of it. Okay, so your footprint charts will match up with numbers. Uh, right, you'll see a cluster up here, for example, and you'll see some higher numbers, uh, and then um, uh, you know you'll see uh, the the numbers match maybe with a, a cluster down here as well. Okay, so um, that's um, that's the traded volume. Okay, and also just want to note uh, a distinction between us uh, and other uh, other trading tools out there, uh, heat maps, is that um, you can see. Uh, where we came from. I mean, basically, the history of uh, of Bookmap, uh, we came from the HFT environment. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, the team they were uh, writing uh, algorithms for um, HFT, and uh, they needed a visualization tool to show where their trades were taking place and how they were getting filled. Okay, and this tool evolved from that. Okay, and uh, we've just gotten uh, more, more and more advanced as time has gone gone on here. Okay, so now let me zoom out here. Okay, so now I've just all I've covered is the the traded volume at this point. All right, uh, now I want to show you the heat map. Okay, so we'll turn that on. Okay. This is the other side of the order flow. Okay? This is uh, understanding the auction process, the intent to trade at specific price levels. Okay? So a lot of traders, when they see a dome, uh, that, you know, what the reaction is is like, well, you know, you can't really read the dome. It's, it's, you know, uh, you don't know if these levels, if they're real traders or not. They're, they can continue to add and pull uh, at those price levels, right? Well, I, I would like to uh, to argue that. Uh, we, we can see it all day long uh, that the, the order book has significant um, uh, uh, reaction or the price has a significant reaction to the uh, the limit order book. Uh, and um, uh, we, we can just uh, look at the example here uh, at 54.20. I mean, there's just no question about it. High liquidity uh, at this price level. It was filled. Transaction took place. Uh, and we can see the bounce now to the upside. All right, uh, and um, uh, where are we going to go? We're gonna, this is where we broke through that high liquidity here around, um, uh, what is it, uh, 54, 31, or 32, okay? So uh, that'll be your low volume node or, or so, 
Yeah, you can see the cluster here. Here's your low volume node. Uh, and uh, we need to see what the order flow looks like up at this level here. Okay, we're just getting to it right now. So let's, we'll see if the sellers are interested. But uh, let me continue on here and um, see, we're seeing some of the algorithmic activity on the, on the bid and offer as well, right in this area here. I'll, I'll cover all this in just a minute, but let me just define the heat map first. Okay, so uh, what you're looking at in the heat map, we take these numbers here uh, in the limit order book uh, and then in the live market window here, uh, they're given a graphical representation in the heat map. Okay, so bright white areas are very high liquidity. Okay, uh, lighter gray areas are going to be high liquidity too. Uh, and then where it's darker is going to be lower liquidity. All right. And you will adjust that uh, to make it um, uh, understandable for you and the way that you trade with various settings here, okay? Because uh, you can uh, you can make this uh, uh, you know show details uh, if you want, right? Uh, it's really it's really up to the way that you trade uh, and what helps you. Um, so. Um, uh, anyway, uh, uh, just a, a little tweak here and there, and you'll be able to uh, uh, really uh, uh, look at uh, the, the areas of distinct liquidity, uh, like this 5440 uh, up here, and uh, starting to pop into the book here at 35 as well. Okay. Um, and uh, all right, so uh, now you'll see this this heat map. I mean, as these numbers change in the limit order book, uh, you're going to see the grayscale change. Okay, and uh, you'll see uh, the the you know the areas get a little brighter here. They're they're adding liquidity. They'll pull liquidity and it gets darker, uh, and um, that's what this looks like here. Okay, at this 5435, this little area here uh, it gets darker and brighter and darker and brighter. That is the adding and pulling of liquidity at this price level. Okay, so we take all of this data here in your limit order book. And now it's it's available historically. Okay, so now you can utilize the data in the limit order book. All right, so you can look at these levels here, uh, and you can see where they were interested in offering. Okay, where they wanted to sell. You can also see the areas where they want to buy. Okay, and we're looking at high liquidity, larger players here. That's the way I've got the uh, the contrast uh, settings. All right. And uh, I can understand their intent to trade at these levels. And why is that important? Okay, it's a FIFO market. It's first in, first out. So uh, if you want to get filled at your price level uh, and you're a serious trader, you're not going to pull your liquidity. You're going to remain in the book because you want to get filled at those levels. All right. Uh, and um, uh, we can uh, start to gauge the and, and understand the auction now of what's going on, okay? Understanding these levels and uh, 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 the intent of, uh, of the traders at these levels. Do they really want to trade or, or do they start to pull liquidity uh, as price comes up toward them and they, and they get cold feet? And no, you know what? We're going to pull from 35 and we're going to add it up to 40 instead, okay? So um, uh, anyway, uh, that's what you're looking at. Uh, so basically, uh, you're looking at a very, very objective view of the marketplace, a complete view of the marketplace here in Bookmap. You're looking at, very specifically, you're looking at traded volume uh, and liquidity uh, at price levels, historically. Okay? And so that's, that's basically it. Um, all right. So now, uh, how, how can we use this uh, information? Uh, and... Um, uh, well, you know, we, we go through the, um, uh, the, um, uh, the webinars each day and uh, uh, just uh, to, uh, you know, give insight to reading uh, the order flow uh, at, at, uh, at these levels uh, and, and the intent of these uh, traders in the auction. So it's it just very simply, um, first, first things first is uh, understand the uh, uh, configuration of the uh, limit order book currently. Where are they uh, on the uh, on the offer, and where are they on the bid? The majority of these traders. Okay. Well, you can see that this 5420, uh, they were here, uh, and then they traded, and then they're actually, you know, they're starting to pop back in uh, and support price 
uh, at that level too. We can also see them getting a little more interested down here at 54.15. Okay. So um, uh, and here, here, here's a good example. Price is starting to come down, and they're they're popping into the book. Okay. So they they want to be buyers. Okay. They actually want to be buyers at higher price levels here. Okay. That's very very aggressive. All right. And um, and you can see how price reacts to it. Okay. And why does it react to it like that? Uh, it's because there's a skew in the auction. Okay. Now they pulled though. And, uh, and price is coming down into that area, okay? So um, we can understand that, d is this guy really a serious trader? No, uh, they're, they're adding and pulling. Um, uh, they wanted to be a, a buyer when price was going away, and then they, they got shy when price came back down. Okay, some, some transactions took place here. We can see the dot. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I would say that uh, they're, not, they're not so serious in this area. It looks like they're more serious down here at this 54.20, right? But we will see as price comes down into these areas, all right? And uh, I just wanted to cover that, the skew, and what I mean by that, all right? So uh, using the analogy of an auction, uh, this is where it can be really helpful, all right? It's just to understand uh, supply and demand at, at areas. Okay, so if if in an auction, uh, think of it uh, that that there's um, uh, you're attending an auction and um, it's for an automobile, uh, and then uh, it's at a certain price and it's 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 going lower, but uh, you notice that uh, a lot of new traders come into the room uh, and they want to be buyers. Okay, uh, and uh, and then price starts to veer away, and it veers away because there's there's more buyers now. Uh, and um, uh, now they, they, they start to chase chase price a little bit. They want to be buyers at a higher price level. All right. So uh, you know the bid is going to go it's going to go higher. Uh, and uh, just just understanding auction uh, auction theory auction process. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, we we see it all day long. Right. And and you can read this very much like an auction. Okay. Uh, so, um, so anyway, that's uh, two thirds of the order flow. Okay, the the other third is reading the tape. Okay, and that's traditional order flow, and, and that is understanding uh, the transactions where they're taking place. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, many of us are very familiar uh, with that uh, because we uh, we study the volume. Okay, and I know that's uh, what a lot of you guys do too. All right, so uh, you can start to read uh, the volume uh, and start to understand the volume in the in the tape and the order flow. Uh, I, I know that we had the uh, oil inventories here. You can see that, uh, and actually, I'd like to cover that. Uh, it will it'll um, bring home a few of the points that I'm talking about, um, and and I will in just a second. But um, uh, we see the initial move to the upside, uh, and then uh, look at this order flow now. This is very indicative and. Um, uh, uh, it's a little muddled. It's not as clean as we can see in the profile here. But uh, this is what order flow looks like in a trending environment. Okay, look at the tape here. Look at the transactions at lower lows. Right. Uh, this is uh, this is how it how it unfolds. Uh, you see more uh, selling or more aggressive selling here at least uh, at these lower lows. Look at the big dots in these in these areas at lower lows. Now look at the lower highs in these areas here. Okay, it's drying up, right? There's less interest in trading at these areas. Okay, you would think that uh, no, they're just reloading and selling a bunch up here. But that that's not the case. Uh, it's really just uh, basically um, uh, market kind of comes up into these areas and exhausts out, uh, and you get your continuation and price discovery to the downside because it can trade there. Okay, it's been established with these big volume transactions that the market can trade here, uh, and it does, and it, and it and it extends even further. Okay, now a lot of absorption in this area here, as you can see, a lot of liquidity being provided and a lot of it being taken. All right, so uh, we might we might start to see the kind of reversal take place here. Okay, um, and this 54.20 was uh, was our area of interest. Right, and it, it could be it could be taking place right here. Uh, and, and why do I say that? Well, because we we haven't made a, a lower low yet. Right, 
Uh, and we, saw, we started to see them jump into the book here and support price at a higher level. Okay, so now you can see I'm reading the tape and the transactions, but I'm also integrating uh, the uh, intent to trade at these levels uh, from the limit order book. Okay, so uh, uh, that's how that's how this this tool uh, can be helpful uh, at your specific levels to start to understand where they're providing that liquidity and where they want to trade. Okay. All right, well, they're definitely putting a cap on it here. They're still, they still want to be sellers up at 54.40, uh, but um, uh, we'll see. Uh, as price comes up into these areas, they, they, may, uh, they may pull, okay? Uh, I, I'm actually looking for them to be tested, to be honest. Uh, and, and why is that? Because I just saw this, this another flurry of transactions take place here uh, at um, a higher area than, uh, than before. Okay, so I'm looking for that test now of 54.40. Okay, and here we go. All right, 35 just tested, uh, and we'll see. Right, but um, uh, you know, uh, there's going to be a lot of a lot of people. We see this trending environment. A lot of people are going to be moving their stops down. They're going to be moving their stops in these areas, uh, and um, uh, I'm looking uh, for that uh, uh, that area to be uh, to be tested because we know there's going to be liquidity there. Right. Uh, there's going to be the, your, your stop orders. Now, uh, someone has that idea and uh, they're providing high liquidity there, as you can see. So uh, anyone who wants to uh, have an aggressive stop, these traders here are, are showing you that uh, uh, they'll, they'll be happy to uh, absorb that for you. Okay. All right. Uh, that's the basics. Um, and uh, I also want to, uh, since we have a fundamental release here, it, it gives a really good example of how these markets operate. Okay, uh, I love I love this stuff uh, because it's 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 very very uh, clear here visually uh, in Bookmap. All right, uh, look at look at look at how the algo started to shut down here uh, four minutes before the uh, the release at eleven o'clock. Okay. Uh, notice how these areas, they, they were brighter, and look at the liquidity provided, the market-making algos providing liquidity, adding and, and pulling it back and forth in these areas here. And then right after 54, I'm sorry, at um, uh, 1056 here, uh, they, um, uh, they started to, uh, to pull their liquidity, okay? Uh, and then uh, you can see them pull more and more and just gets darker and darker in this area, okay? Uh, and... Um, uh, so this is what happens in really thin markets, all right? This is why you get these erratic price moves uh, during fundamental releases. There is a lack of liquidity. If there's a lack of liquidity, it's going to go and find where it can trade, okay? Where there's liquidity provided, okay? And we can see uh, even these guys up here at, at, uh, at 90, they, they, they pulled, okay? As price is coming up, look at them pull here. Uh, and you can you can start to piece it together here um, pretty pretty clearly. They're pulling, and uh, uh, it looks like at least um, one of these guys here in this lineup pulled and then added a tick higher here at 95, uh, and perhaps the rest of them started to provide liquidity here around this uh, uh, 95 to, to 55 even uh, price. Okay, so you can see there, there there's a bearish slant to it up in this area here. Okay, you got your round number up here. Uh, and uh, they're willing to absorb it if they can. Okay, uh, they, they didn't get they didn't get tested. Uh, the the the, uh, the buyers didn't take them on, right? Uh, but um, uh, they, they were they were happy to uh, to get short in these areas here and provide high liquidity. Okay, so anyway, the point is here uh, that uh, the way that uh, uh, markets uh, in an auction uh, behave uh, is you can see. Um, that uh, uh, if if there's a lack of liquidity, uh, you get erratic price movement and volatility, okay? Because uh, there, there's no one else uh, to stop it. It's gonna trade at the next stop where someone wants to be a seller or where someone wants to be a buyer, okay? All right. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it takes a, it takes a few minutes after, uh, after a release uh, and you'll start to see the uh, the algos and, and uh, market makers uh, start to, to pop back into the market here, okay? All right. Okay. 
Okay, so now we didn't get our test yet uh, of 5440. I uh, just went up to 35, but uh, we might uh, get our reload here and uh, finally get it now, okay, uh, and get one more extension here. And, and why, why again? Uh, well, look at the cluster of volume here, right? Uh, at, a, at a higher higher high in the microstructure for sure. Okay, we broke this little swing here. Okay, what we need to do though, and that we need to break this swing basically uh, around eh, somewhere between this 5440 and 45. Okay, uh, and um, uh, that's what we're we're looking for here. Uh, this is more microstructural, um, and we and we can see we we did break it, and we have more volume trading at this level now. Okay, at 35. Therefore, we have the potential for price discovery to 54.40. All right, and we can start to see uh, some of the uh, algorithmic activity. You might see a spoofing type of action. Uh, get very aggressive underneath here, uh, and um, uh, we'll, we'll see if I, we can find some uh, uh, another maybe a good example of that. But uh, uh, you'll see very very high liquidity get very aggressive uh, right underneath price uh, on the bid for this example, uh, and um, uh, if if that uh, uh, occurs uh, and then they pull. Well, they don't really have intent to trade. They just have intent to skew the market uh, to to go to the upside uh, per, with the potential to to fill maybe liquidity uh, on their on the offer. Okay, and you can see all this unfold here uh, in Bookmap. All right, it's uh, uh, they're they're basically um, uh, you know un uncovered, uh, and and you can see it. Um, Let's see, uh, what was I going to, uh, 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 there's a, a few more new features here that, uh, and this is a really big step for us uh, at Bookmap, so I want to cover this. Um, and that is the, uh, we, we now offer an API, uh, which means that you can write your own indicators and automated strategies within Bookmap. Okay, so let me open up the indicator panel here. All right, uh, and uh, let me go over this. Okay, uh, yeah, Kevin, I'm using um, uh, version. Uh, well, I'll, I'll hold off on the answering the questions, but I just saw that pop in. Uh, I'm using using the uh, beta version uh, 5.0 Bookmap. All right, and uh, the the API is this tool here. Okay, so let's click on that, uh, and uh, it's we we're showcasing um, the cumulative volume delta. Okay, that's the only one we have here for the uh, indicator subpanel, right? Uh, and um, uh, you can see I have a, a, a few different lines here, uh, and um, uh, with uh, different settings for the cumulative volume delta. Okay, so uh, for those of you who know what cumulative volume delta is, it's rather straightforward. Uh, it's just uh, adding um, the uh, uh, positive values if it's a market buy, and then subtracting it if it's a um, a market sell, and uh, you get an overall feeling of uh, uh, buying and selling. Okay, there's many ways to read it and use it uh, as a tool for uh, to help help give insight to your levels. Uh, looking for um, uh, a difference between uh, uh, an area where perhaps price is absorbed by limit orders and there's a lot of selling, but price doesn't move, uh, or exhaustion, uh, or looking for momentum. Uh, and accumulation. Now, uh, they all work uh, quite well in Bookmap, and you can verify it within the heat map uh, and the traded volume as well. Okay, uh, but there's there's also some filters here, so uh, pretty pretty nice uh, just to showcase uh, what you can do here. Uh, I've got the minimum accountable volume size here at 13. What this means is uh, I'm looking for trades that are larger than 13 um, contracts. And uh, therefore, I'm, I'm looking for only the cumulative volume delta of more aggressive, larger players. And I can, I can look at that compared to uh, the, the, all of the, uh, the rest of the uh, traders combined. Okay? And, it, and, you know, uh, it might give insight to a specific area. Okay? You can also reset it at any time that you want. It's up to you. Uh, and, uh, and have it go back to zero, which will allow you, for example, uh, if you wanted to study, maybe that you think this is the low here uh, at this 5420, 
uh, then um, uh, you can uh, uh, have it reset at that point and then read the cumulative volume from that point onward. Okay. All right. So that's that's uh, all programmable uh, with the uh, cumulative volume delta. Uh, and um, now there's uh, some automated uh, trading strategies that you can program as well. All right. And that is the um, uh, showcased here. And these are just examples. Uh, with uh, we have three different algos. Okay. There's a chase escape and execute algo okay uh, and um, let me uh, uh, let me demo these uh, here for you okay so uh, uh, the the chase algo uh, this is just like I said to showcase what you can do uh, in bookmap this one's really really straightforward it's like a it basically works like a trailing stop um, and um, you know here it says like keep my order at a distance of no larger than three ticks away from uh, at the best price here okay uh, and uh, let me turn that on all right uh, and uh, and uh, let me place uh, a few limit orders here and we'll watch it work okay let's zoom in here all right actually uh, yeah let me um, since uh, I don't want to get filled at the moment I want to watch these work and, and demo them for you. Let me go over the next one as well here, okay? Uh, the uh, escape strategy, okay? So this one is a lot more um, uh, uh, complex. Uh, this algo here will read uh, uh, SKUs in the limit order book uh, and then it will react to it, okay? So uh, the conditions set up here uh, is uh, if price uh, if my limit order is within one price level of the best price okay uh, so one tick away uh, and uh, the total size of uh, one price level okay is very very simple example here you can have multiple price levels and if I see a skew uh, in that um, uh, price level uh, at my order side okay and it's less than 300 percent of the opposite side then do an action Okay, and that action is to move away. So let me um, let me demo this here. It might be a little simpler to visualize here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna um, click up here uh, at 54.45. Uh, okay, and you can see uh, immediately the the chase strategy is working. Okay, it's chasing price by three ticks. Okay, uh, and uh, the escape strategy. Let's see if this works, or it might be fulfilling the 300%. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to um, place a buy here. Ah, okay. I was filled. Um, okay. So, and then ah, we just hit our 5440 level. Okay. We were looking for that, right? Okay. We got it. Um, and uh, let me, I'm going to place another um, uh, buy here uh, down at um, uh, 5430. Okay. And you can see I'm immediately chasing by three ticks. Okay. Uh, and um, I'm going to place another cell up here because uh, I want to demo the escape strategy if I can get it to not fill. Um, in fact, let me uh, let me flatten this position and I'll, I'll try that again. All right. So, uh, all right, here we go. So I'm straddling the market and I'm chasing. Okay, and you can see that. Um, actually, I'm going to chase by a little more aggressively. Let's make it uh, one tick, okay? Because I want that escape strategy to work here for you, so you can see that. Uh, no, I keep on getting filled. Okay, let me uh, let me flatten that again, and let me uh, uh, bump this up to make it impossible to get filled. Um, this is usually for the S and P. I don't use it for oil, uh, so let's just make it a thousand or yeah, thirteen hundred percent. That's fine. Okay. All right. So the the way that the escape strategy works um, is um, ah, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. This is this is my error. Okay. I I'm sorry. I do not have this. Um, uh, engage. That's what the issue is here. Okay. There we go. Let's try that again. Okay. Um, okay. So the way that the escape strategy works, 
uh, is it's looking for um, liquidity uh, to back up my decision. Okay, so if I don't have high liquidity, uh, let's just say, for example, uh, let me zoom into here. Okay, if I don't have high liquidity behind me uh, in in this area here, then escape away, and you can see it moved away by one tick. Okay, and why is that? Uh, is because well, we we do see that I do have liquidity behind me, but not thirteen hundred percent. Right, uh, it's a uh, you know what one forty five here, um, or yeah, versus uh, you know ninety uh, or or twenty nine here. Um, and um, it's just not enough, right? So what this allows you to do is um, you can um, uh, stay out of a trade. Let's say you're, you're bullish, but you're a, a cautious bull, okay? Uh, you're trying to maybe catch a bottom. Uh, so you are waiting uh, and you want to move away, looking for a better price uh, to continue to move away from the market until you have more buyers below you that want to buy uh, on the uh, on the bid. Uh, if that is the case, then um, no action will take place, and your order will remain in the book. Okay, but the, you can see how it's working right now. Uh, both continue to straddle uh, the market, going back and forth. Okay, uh, and uh, it's doing that uh, because. Uh, uh, the, is, the condition is um, uh, not being met here, um, that uh, I'll have enough liquidity behind me to back my decision to stay in the market. Okay? So I continue to, uh, to move uh, back and forth here okay, by a tick. Okay? Actually, so both of these strategies uh, engaged at the same time, are, are, um, they're working very much like a, a market-making algo, uh, to be honest. Uh, they will uh, continue to provide liquidity uh, at levels until a certain point uh, or condition is true, and then they, they will remain in the book and provide that liquidity. All right. So, um, uh, yeah, we're real excited about it. This is uh, showcasing that um, uh, just two of them here, uh, the chase and escape algo, uh, and uh, uh, you can uh, write uh, whatever kind of algo or automated strategy you like. If you want it to look for uh, some sort of signal here in your cumulative volume delta um, uh, with specific volume or something like this, uh, then that's no problem at all. Okay. So it's all available for you. Uh, it's not available at the moment. Uh, it's just a demo. Uh, it will be available here, though, in uh, Q1 of 2017. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, what do we got going on in the order flow? Let me um, let me flatten here uh, the position, and um, I will turn these off for the moment, and uh, also get rid of some of the noise here. Uh, you can see, you know, we came like I mentioned before, we came from that HFT environment. You can see how your your uh, your orders are reacting very specifically in this market, uh, and uh, uh, that's um, uh, that's that's what we do at Bookmap, right? Uh, that's the the way that uh, uh, our vision of uh, of the marketplace. So you can see exactly how your your uh, uh, strategies are working out for you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's just step back and take a look at the order flow now. Uh, what's going on here? Okay, we had a nice our nice spike here. Uh, looking, we're kind of looking for that, right? I was looking for 54.40 to be tested. We got a breakthrough even further, and we have volume now trading at a higher high. Okay, transactions trading at a higher high. All right, we're seeing, we're we're witnessing. Uh, now this is bigger picture stuff too. This is we're looking at you know since 11 o'clock. Um, we're looking at the order flow here. This is very very indicative of that rounding bottom here, and we can see the order flow playing out nicely within that rounding bottom. Okay. Uh, in fact, you can now draw on the tool on, on the chart with the drawing tools here, uh, and we can see very nicely. It just uh, pops out to me, so I got to got to show it. Uh, the uh, break of the trend line, volume trading, and accepting at a higher high, uh, and uh, now it's the uh, the opposite. And now we need to see does it accept up here in this area, or does it? Uh, uh, 
uh, break down and uh, continue down to the downside. Okay, so let's draw in one more line here uh, and uh, and just get a feel for it. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit for that and edit that line. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay. All right. So um, let's see. All right. I mean, you, I, I've seen it many times in the in the oil market. Um, you know what you what you'll get is like uh, um, uh, you'll get this uh, kind of flush through here and clean out the stops. Uh, you get a retest of it. Uh, a lot of times you get kind of like a double top, uh, and then it's like the the real the real deal. Uh, you know, does it accept or break down? Okay. Um, uh, a lot of times you'll see, yeah, it does accept, and you'll get a nice, nice big spike in uh, short uh, covering uh, to the upside. Or a lot of times what you'll see is um, uh, this is where uh, you'll get maybe that retest right here. Where we just, we basically just had it, uh, and then the sellers really jump in here again, right? And then you get you get another push and um, uh, move here to the downside. Okay, uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, very, very classic. What what I see in the uh, in the oil market, uh, at least. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, anything else I need to cover here? Those are those are the main features, uh, big features uh, that I wanted to cover. Um, and uh, let's see. I've almost been going on for oh, about forty five minutes or so. So let's let's open it to, up to questions. Uh, any questions that you guys have? Uh, and. Um, so, so Bruce, you can see the uh, you can see the questions in um in uh, yeah go to mm -hmm. webinar. Yeah. I will feather in the questions from Omnobi here. So, uh, I'll let you handle those uh, go to webinar questions, and I'll gather up these uh, Omnobi questions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, someone's talking about the S&P, uh, DS signal, I don't know what you mean by that. Um, uh, the DS signal is one of our indicators. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> CL is so bipolar it scares the crap out of me. Uh, Richard, he it looks like he left, um, but uh, yeah, you you may be seeing all the earlier questions. It looks like. Um, uh, so oh yeah, me, yeah, yeah. I'm so, I'm looking at ten. Uh, yeah, thirty. Bunch of the oh, okay. questions. Let, let me do this. Let me just kind of read them off here. Um, it says, "Good morning. Can you open a couple of screens with one user? So, can you have multiple? You can have multiple instruments with one user, but not multiple." I think not multiple of the same charts, correct? And that's correct, but you can like uh, you can pop these out, um, you know, if you want to have it in a, in a different chart. For so, for example, let me uh, let me show you here. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll take gold out, okay, uh, and look at the gold chart here. Uh, if you want to if you want to do something like that, okay. Yeah. So it doesn't. I mean, you can see they're all tabbed here. Uh, you can continue to have them tabbed, or if you have multiple monitors and you want to have uh, one market up on and one monitor and and uh, you know something else on another. Okay. If I close it, it'll just pop right back into the ch tab here. And that's the way we use it in the room, guys. I have mine out of the tabs, um, so I have just the CL that you see on screen and then the ES above you. And yeah, we 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 do that. That's exactly how we do it. That's exactly how we do it in here. Okay, another question in from Brad. I'm not sure exactly what he means. He says, is it contrary reading, Brad? If you want to re-clarify that a little bit, we'll come back to that. Uh, Andrew, we'll come back to that. Eli, can you open a couple of screens of one user? We just did that. Okay, uh, which version are you using? I think you're probably on the most uh, recent version. Can you show them how they can tell which version they're on? Uh, yeah, sure. 
uh, let's see, just um, just go over to help here uh, and then update and then check for updates. Okay. Um, and uh, oh yeah, it'll be under about uh, whatever version. If you'll see real real distinct difference here, if uh, if your book map doesn't look like this, then you're using 4.5. Okay. And uh, if it looks like this, then you're using the new beta version uh, or current beta version. We've had it beta for quite a while. It's very solid, so uh, you're, it's safe to use. But uh, it just it it still is a beta uh, as we continue to develop uh, for it. Okay. All right, it says, uh, can you use the API to connect to TradeStation 2? No. Okay. Uh, I am currently on trial, in trial, on trial? Ha! Huh. I'm currently in a trial with uh, 4.5 version. Can I download the 5.0 version and try it instead? Today is my first day of the trial. Absolutely. Okay, there you go, Kevin. Uh, Kevin also asks, what does COB, CVP, and SVP stand for on the histograms? Okay, um, these are um, some of the volume profiles, okay, uh, and we can show all sorts of data. Like, like I said, I mean, our strength really is that we come from the HFT environment. So, um, you know, uh, for example, the CVP here, this is showing you the chart range volume profile, all right? So what that means is everything viewable in my chart range, I'm getting the profile for. Okay. SVP is session range volume profile. So this is when I opened up my book map and started collecting data, it starts making this, uh, this volume profile. So what that allows you to do uh, is compare and contrast specific areas. So uh, if you're interested only in this little breakout that we, we witnessed here from uh, 35 on up, well then just put that in your, in your profile or in your chart range. Right, and then you're going to get the profile now of of just that volume. Okay, so therefore you can uh, you can see you know you can you can contrast and compare uh, low and high volume nodes uh, within your session range volume profile. Right now, if you right click in here, uh, you can see all the different um, uh, types of data. We have a trades counter, a quotes counter quotes delta and custom notes. The trades counter uh, is showing you uh, the not the um, volume that traded, it's showing you the, the, the um, uh, transactions uh, that took place. Okay, uh, so uh, why would you care about that? Well, in the HFT environment, um, like uh, I was demoing here before, when we zoom into these areas, in the algorithmic environment, you know, the way that these markets trade is, is you don't see, um, uh, let me, the ES is such a better example uh, just because so much more trade, but these kinds of clusters and flurries of activity take place, right? The algos read that because they will disguise their position. They won't trade, you won't see lots of block trades go through in an algorithmic environment. Instead, you'll see many small, many transactions go through for small trades and they disguise their position uh, and accumulation uh, that way. Uh, but we, you can catch it with um, you know, your trades counter. And a lot of the algos read that instead, right? And that's why we also have a quotes counter, okay? And uh, uh, the quotes counter, I, I like to use this example of, uh, uh, it's like pit noise in a sense, okay? Because what you're looking at here are the number of quotes added and refreshed at these specific areas. So before quote stuffing was uh, illegal, this was a great tool, right? But um, uh, anyway, um, uh, you know, if you see a lot of interest at an area, um, uh, then uh, the algos also read that information. Uh, it's because uh, if there's interest at an area, it has the potential to trade there. Cool. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, question here: uh, Would you explain the bars? <clears throat> excuse me. On top of the book, and the vol. It said, "Okay." Would you explain the bars on top of the book? And I'm assuming that's the book and volume. Ah, here. Yeah. Uh, and the histograms, and you just went through the CVS and SVP and how you would use them. So you went through that. So basically, let's talk about the uh, book and the uh, volume at the top. Sure. This is this is an add-on indicator. It comes with a bookmap advanced version. Uh, we have a few others here. You can you can see this. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, uh, hmm. 
Okay, so I just got out of the picture here. Okay, there they are. All right, you see this little red number here, uh, as well as these little white lines, okay, as well as the book and volume uh, imbalance indicators. These are add-ons, okay, that we uh, 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 produced, uh, and uh, they're offered with the advanced version, okay. So the book and volume, um, uh, it's looking for um, uh, an imbalance, for example, in the, in the traded volume here. Okay, and it works on, again, using this uh, chart range um, theme okay, or concept. So uh, if I zoom in, I'm going to get a different, a different reading here uh, compared to if I zoom out. Okay? Uh, and um, uh, the, uh, uh, it's just reading all the transactions here and then giving you an overall skew to it. Okay? It's the same with the book. It's reading not the volume, but though it's reading the current book as well as the historical book. So where are they lining up to provide liquidity? And you, do you see uh, a distinction between the two or a skew in it? All right. Uh, and again, that's for chart range as well. Okay. Now there's some settings for it. I, I, I don't want to get too, too detailed with some of these things, but um, uh, some of the uh, volume and balance um, uh, uh, settings here or book and balance here, uh, you can limit the numbers of levels you want to calculate, and you can also um, uh, exponentially weight them as well. Okay, and that'll have a pretty dramatic effect on the uh, uh, imbalance for the book. Cool. Okay. Um, let's see. On the bottom right, this ask this question has been asked twice. On the bottom right, uh, you have your tool with the big guys up with twelve forty six, and the rest still minus twenty nine sixty two. Can you explain? So it's your CV. Uh, I can't tell if that's a D or an O at the yeah, bottom. Yes, CVD. Yeah, and then uh, you have the bar, you have that next to it. What's, can you explain those numbers briefly, and what's the difference? Yeah, absolutely. Um, th these are the um, outputs for the um, accumulative volume delta. Okay, so so with this new API, um, not only do you get a, a an indicator panel, you get this widget panel here. Uh, and um, let me uh, get rid of actually a few of these here. Um, so this is what it's showing here. Here's the CVD. Uh, with the cumulative volume delta for that 13 lot filter, okay. So here's the indicator panel switch for it here for hiding and showing, okay. Uh, and then here is the uh, the widget panel for hiding and showing, right. So that that's what it is. Uh, you can also show it in bars if you want, um, and so you can have all sorts of different uh, uh, indicators um, in this area here. Cool. Okay, um, let's see here. Does this work uh, 23 hours a day uh, and what platform? So I'll let you speak to that. I think I know the answer, but I'll let you speak to that. So it, basically, I'm getting lots of platform questions and lots of connectivity questions. So I'm going to break these up into a couple different questions. I, I, I think this can be open. Anytime you're open and there's data flowing through it, it can work, correct? That's correct. Okay. And so... I'm getting lots of questions like, does this work on NinjaTrader and does this work on TradeStation? This is a standalone platform, correct? Yes. And you just have to have your data feed that goes through that particular idea, whether that's Rhythmic or CQG or what are the data and where can they find the data that can be connected to this standalone platform? Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, connectivity, you'll find it here uh, at bookmap.com. And uh, uh, you, you'll see them all here, okay? Uh, so IQ Feed, Interactive Brokers, Tradeavate, um, uh, many at AMP, uh, Transact, uh, then uh, let's just let this reset, uh, S5 data, CQG data, Rhythmic data, Gain Capital, uh, and, uh, and Ninja 7 and 8, okay? So we connect to, and, and then also uh, for Ninja and, and Trading Technologies, or TT, uh, XTrader, it, it connects to, for those of you using TT, uh, it's for XTrader Pro, uh, the TT API for XTrader Pro. Okay, so you, you do need an XTrader account, right? So we're, we are just a regular platform, just like anyone else, um, but um, uh, we also connect through the API um, with NinjaTrader, uh, Interactive Brokers, and TT, uh, XTrader. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay. So we're gonna, I've got several pricing questions. We're going to come back to that in just a second. Um, let me get over to the Omnovi. I think that just about answers everything on GoToWebinar. Uh, is, okay, okay. So I'm getting instrument type questions. Does it do currency pairs like the, uh, can you do 
you know, Forex, Euro US, you know, uh, those kinds of currency, Pound US, Swiss, you know, those kinds of, can you do that? Um, the uh, spot market, there is no limit order book. So uh, this is not going to work for you. Uh, you, okay. you, need, you need a centralized limit order book. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, then, then, uh, you, you can get the volume, uh, data as well as the, uh, um, uh, you know, depth of market data, right? So that, that means though, that, uh, if you, if you want to look at currency pairs, uh, futures, uh, future currency pairs, uh, no problem. Uh, you know, that's what a lot of traders do. In fact, uh, we have a, a very well-known one that's presented for us many times, uh, what he does is he looks at book map and the order flow for the currency futures, but then he'll make his transactions in the spot markets. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, so you get, uh, so I'm getting just, again, instrument questions. I know you, any, basically any, any futures market you can trade, you can use this with gold, NQYM, TF, just name it. That basically, any futures market, it, this will be something that is compatible with. Uh, yeah, yeah, it should it should work. I I, I also see that there's um uh, a lot on stocks here. Questions on stocks. Yeah. Uh, we Option. will we will be offering this for stocks in the near future. Um, I believe I'm not sure about this, but I believe it's also for Q1 of 2017. Uh, this this year. This year, yeah. Okay, cool. Because uh, are we through Q1 yet? We're about to be through Q. We're yeah, about to get no, or no, we're our, dead, okay. our deadline's coming up. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> um, so I'm getting lots of platform questions about in uh, Omnovia um, about can my processor handle it and things like that. I'm sure you have some specifics, but I could tell you from my own personal experience that when all else is failing around me in terms of being able to keep up with it, and I have a really big machine, but my issues are doc. This is the only thing that stays alive, right? This thing is so lightweight. And it, this is the only thing that will stay alive. So from a processing standpoint, this is very lightweight. You would agree with that, I'm assuming? Yeah, I, I, I do. I mean, um, the footprint on the, on the um, a CPU is, is, uh, is not too heavy. Uh, you know, it's Java-based. So if you want to develop the, you know, uh, strategies or indicators, they'll have to be done in the API with Java. Um, but the... Um, uh, you know, instead, uh, what we're utilizing uh, is the uh, we'll use your GPU um, to, to to kind of um, alleviate the uh, usage on the on the CPU. So that means on on the graphics card, right? Um, uh, but um, and if you guys are having some issues with the graphics card, uh, there's a, a setting here GPU acceleration. If you just deselect that, uh, then um, uh, you, you know you won't have um, uh, is heavy usage on your graphics card, but more usage instead on your um, on your CPU. Perfect. Uh, okay, let me just kind of go through here really quickly. Uh, uh, let's see, Jason, which software are you talking, and is it work on NinjaTrader? Well, again, it's a standalone process. Okay, I'll come back. Uh, I get I'm getting a few questions comparing and contrasting. Uh, and I don't want to get too deep into this, to be honest with you, but just comparing and contrasting you to some other platforms like Jigsaw as an example. Um, and so I don't want to get too deep into that, but um, I can tell you guys that they both that they both have their own pros, right? They both have their own pros. I personally, I'll just tell you this, and we will we'll leave it at that. I prefer what we're using here at Bookmap, and that's why you see Bookmap here today, right? So that's what I prefer. So, um, all right. So, getting a uh, getting a lot of questions on pricing. So I am there, going. To there is something I I wanted to just mention on that. Um, yeah. uh, you know, and and just try to be really objective on that. Uh, the um, uh, one of the things that um, uh, I I really think is is quite a, quite an advantage with Bookmap compared to uh, to other not not just uh, other you know order flow and heat map tools, but but uh, even um, uh, footprint tools, uh, and, and, and we can see exactly why uh, this is important, is if we don't aggregate the data, right? It, it's, 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 not, it's not tick based, it's not volume based, it's not uh, time based. I mean, it's, it's basically um, every instant in the market uh, is, uh, is recorded. So 
and and how that can be really helpful is like uh, you start to zoom into these areas and you can start to see the accumulation here uh, in these areas you're not going to see that I mean look at look at them you can see them clearly getting more aggressive here uh, algorithmically right with more buying okay as they continue to lift the offer in these areas uh, and uh, you know you start to combine that with you know some of these uh, bigger picture issues that we covered during the webinar um, and uh, and and this can this can offer that advantage if you start to zoom out though or other other tools what they're going to do is they're just going to aggregate that data right you're just going to see it um, uh, that number it'll start to increase right but you won't really know that uh, you know they're they're accumulating like you can see it clearly in, in bookmap and that, that's a real nice distinction cool um, so just before we get to the pricing idea um, Patricia says this is her favorite product can we talk about icebergs are they orders or contracts and I see different numbers from mine versus Jason sometimes okay uh, iceberg one um, is um, can, can be tricky um, and um, it's a really it's a really simple um, uh, 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 add-on um, or, or calculation uh, and um, I, I may have to um, I don't want to get too into it I mean I, I know I'm already taking up much of your time so uh, but I'll, I'll just I'll just cover this the the iceberg it, what they are they're hidden orders okay and they're captured here with this red number that I mentioned earlier all right uh, over on the uh, this column here um, the uh, this 24 and this 23 what this is uh, is um, uh, it's liquidity liquidity that traded that was not in the limit order book at that time okay so it's a hidden order right so how can more trade than what is actually being offered well it's impossible right uh, but it, it is possible with if you have a hidden order or your iceberg so what, what you'll see is you'll see transactions take place and and volume trade but there's no liquidity um, and um, it's it, it kind of uh, throws you for a little loop but you know that that's going to be a, an iceberg because uh, they don't want to show their liquidity in the book and why is that is because they'll skew the auction um, and uh, the supply and demand will be out of um, out of whack a little bit and and they they'd rather uh, use a hidden order type to disguise their uh, their size cool all right so let's talk about pricing um, why don't you tell them about the deal that's going on right now and then uh, We've got a link that you can click on it to, to get there. And uh, so why don't you talk a little bit about what your guys are offering for today? Sure. <clears throat> okay. Uh, which one is it? Okay, yeah, this one. Whoops. Not that one. So while he's doing that, I'm going to throw you in a link here, guys, to a place where you can uh, – this is the Omnovia. And let me throw this into the main chat window if you guys want to get a copy of this, if you haven't done so already, here's a link to go and do that with. And let me throw that into the main window here. It, there you go. So he's going to talk to you about pricing options, and uh, there is a discount today. All right. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, and again, uh, thank, thanks for the opportunity. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're offer, offering a discount. Uh, it's actually just one day left on this. Uh, and... Um, uh, I'll just go through the options here. All right, so first off, we have a free trial. Okay, it's 14 days. Uh, you can just uh, sign up and uh, and download it, um, and uh, and you'll be in a 14-day uh, trial. Uh, you'll you'll have access to the fully featured advanced version. Uh, so that's this version here, uh, and um, uh, the advanced is it's $99 per month. It's billed quarterly. Uh, and then there's another version, the, ba the basic version here. Now it's 49 per month and it's billed quarterly. Uh, and, and the difference between the two, okay, uh, are primarily these add-on features, okay, that iceberg detector, that those volume imbalances and the, the large lot tracker. Um, but the, the, and probably the most important one or the most powerful one is the ability to trade right from the chart, okay. So that means that um, uh, I can also start to utilize now um, those automated strategies with the new API um, so I can trade right from the chart and um, uh, see how my orders are, are behaving um, so those are the, the two different options uh, and uh, and 
yeah, as it, as it says here, we have we've got 30 30 percent uh, uh, discount on those. Uh, one day left. It's it's um, so if you are currently in trial um, with Bookmap, uh, then uh, uh, you've got uh, you've got one day left. All right, to make a decision. Uh, uh, if uh, uh, you want to uh, take advantage of the um, 30 percent. Uh, discount, uh, and uh, this is your first time you've ever heard of Bookmap. Uh, use the link that uh, Jason put into the uh, the chat there, uh, and um, uh, then uh, 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 you'll you'll have uh, you'll get the 30 30 uh, percent discount, but uh, you'll get a 14 day um, uh, trial period. Uh, but you you will need to pay for it first. Okay. Um, so the uh, the free trial here is is completely free. Um, you you won't get that if you today if you do that um, uh, free trial, uh, but you don't you don't go through and, and actually pay and get the discount. Okay, so that's the distinction between that. So let me ask this question. I, I, maybe I didn't understand that. So and if I didn't, maybe some others didn't either. So if they go to the free trial today, okay. So if they go click on that, they click on my link, they sign up for a free trial. Um, then and they and they pay for it. They they need to put up. They need to uh, uh, go through a transaction process for the okay. to get the thirty percent, right? Okay. That the, the the thing here is is this: if you're in free trial right now, you need to make a decision, right? Um, uh, because if you want the thirty percent discount, you, you got to go through and, and make a transaction. Okay. Uh, if the if uh, if you're new here to Bookmap. Um, and uh, you want um, the um, uh, uh, you know 30 percent? Well, yeah, pay for it. Um, go through the transaction. But if you're new, right, we will still give you um, like a 14 day uh, refund policy. Okay. If yeah, you're, okay. If that was you're, yeah. Yeah. If you're in trial right now, though, you, you've you've already seen it. You know, you, you've um, uh, you you know what you're getting. Um, so uh, it's up to you. Uh, if you want to okay, uh, so just just to or... recap, yeah, cool. So just to, I just want to make sure. So there's two ways to go. If you've already ventured over to Bookmap and you're on some free, tr you're on your trial, and maybe you're on day five. You haven't taken your full 14 day, but you're on day five. You've got an opportunity to get a 30 percent discount today. If you are not, you, you're just seeing this for the first time, and you've got a link in here with us, and you click on that link today, they're going to ask you to pay the. Let's say you want to go with the advanced. But at the end of that 14 days, if you don't like it, then you'll get a refund. Is that right? Yeah, and you'll get the okay. you'll get that discount as well. Yeah, you get the discount, and then you yeah. get a refund. Yeah. Now, if you don't, you the, and the, and and to be be clear on the on the discount, the the 30 percent is uh, you know subscription based here, so um, it's 30 percent on the first you know quarter here. Uh, okay. That's, that's so that, that's the question that's coming in as well. So if you want to do that, it's 30 percent based on that first quarter. And are the prices re that are reflected on the screen that we see here, is that the price or is it 30% off of those listed prices? 30% off the listed prices there. Okay, cool. That's a good deal, guys. I'm telling you, um, when, I bought, when I bought it, it was a lot more expensive, right? And so the first time before I began established, it's a really good deal. I'm, I'm just telling you, it's a powerful tool. Uh, we only scratched the iceberg, no pun intended, tip of the iceberg <laughs> here today. It's a, it's a perfect it's a perfect tool. You see me use it. You, for those of you that have been around me a long time, you've seen it go from a little bitty postage stamp in the bottom right-hand corner of my screen to um, it takes up one half of my screen today, right? And so if you were in here towards the end of the trading session, you saw us utilize this tool to get short from 57 down to a target of 24. Right, so 33 ticks on the CL on two lots, and it was a home run. Right, so if you haven't done it, the links are in there. If you have done it, pick it up. If you haven't done it already, go get that. Uh, um, go get that uh, information. You'll be all squared away. So, a couple of couple of just technical support type questions. If somebody has trouble setting it up or screens or, or they want some settings. Do you guys offer some technical support? Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm going input, to input that right now. Uh, I also that so technical support. Reach out to us at support at veloxpro.com. I put it into the chat there for you, uh, or any questions that you have. Uh, now there, there's a few questions here also about lifetime, um, and uh, if this is offered for lifetime, 
Uh, and um, uh, just you can reach out to me at, Br at Bruce at VeloxPro uh, if you have any questions regarding that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, um, RJ, yes, there is a an extensive training manual that comes with this. There is a I don't know, it's fifty pages, maybe it's big. It's it's there's a lot of in depth detail. Yeah, I mean, and 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 the webinars too. I mean, to to uh, you know, ask any questions. I mean, you know, it's not a trading room. Uh, it's um, it's going over how to how to use the tool, but but all the fun features and functionality as well. Okay. Well, that's um, what I have. <laughs> That's why they have us, right? So we can show them how to use it and trade and do those kinds of things. Well, I mean, yeah, fantastic. Uh, you're you're even better because uh, you're, you're you know you you're uh, uh, engaged in the market as well. Uh, some interesting stuff here. I just I gotta point it out because uh, I I just love this stuff. Um, uh, interesting to see here in the order flow. Um, this this is what what I was kind of uh, well. This is not what I alluded to. This is exactly what I said. Um, you know, you see, like, you get this um, the spike here, uh, and then you, you see one more spike, one more push up into, uh, you know, your 5450 here. So you got your round figure, right? Uh, that's where we drop from over here. That's where we see high liquidity here, and they they actually got filled. A lot of it got filled. You can see the transactions that took place, right? So here's kind of like your like your double top here, uh, and then uh, now you can see. Uh, that this uh, this breakout failed to the upside, right? We're right back down here uh, and uh, uh, back down to uh, it's going to be your your you know basically your high volume node here at at 54.30, uh, and you can see the uh, that right here in the in the profile. But um, uh, now uh, that that order flow has changed, you know, uh, we're looking at a different picture here. So uh, well, here's the here's the beauty of that, uh, Bruce. And so this is where us being together book map and the things that we offer, uh, we have a level at 48, right? And so the market rallied right up into 48, 50, 49, right in that area, found the resistance at that primary level that we have, one of our primary levels, and then it sold off, right? And so same thing that happened on the big sell-off today, we, we had an area, and so that's, that's the beauty of this, right? So you can see it without seeing what I'm seeing on my end, and it just adds confirmation to what we do, right? It, and we know that there's a known level there, and, and one of the things that we talk about is one of the really cool things is that the liquidity begins to stack up around our areas of support and resistance, and that's how we know that it's, you know, that it's valid. And then it gets there, and then it fails, and you can really start to get into, get into the granular reasons why it fails. Um, but you also know that there's there's a level there, right? And that that is it's pretty cool. So when you combine the two together, by the, each one by themselves provide you with good insight. It gets particularly powerful when you put them together. Yeah, that's that's the key. I think is is um, exactly um, I, you know like um, Jason. Um, uh, it was great having you having you in our room and showing like how you use the tool. Uh, and looking at your own proprietary levels of interest, um, but then you want to look at the book and see if it supports that decision, and that's where this can be really powerful. I mean, I'm looking for further extension to the downside here, right? Uh, and why? Look at the cluster here, that a volume that traded, and that, now I'm looking for the lows to be tested down at this 54.20, and we'll see, right? But um, uh, that's what I see so far. Uh, you know, I mean, heck, maybe just you know. Uh, trade sideways the rest of the day here, but uh, uh, it did not accept up here, right? Um, and uh, uh, you guys were looking at your higher levels of interest uh, based on uh, uh, Jason's um, uh, uh, levels uh, or your oil trading group levels there, and uh, uh, it matched. It matched with your order flow. Yeah, and that's what, again, you know, that's where the two ideas together, and if you're a regular room member, you know exactly what we're talking about. If you're a guest in here and you haven't taken a trial in our room or you haven't taken the trial with this tool, if you, you could marry those two together and you, you would have, you, you would start to see that the insight that you're gaining, at least the way that we look at the world, the insight that you're gaining into this kind of idea is, is pretty powerful. So, all right. So, I know you probably got stuff to do, and I've got a I also as well. And and so, unless there are any last minute questions here, um, or any things that uh, you would like to put a punctuation point on, um, I think we're good. 
Okay. No, it just looks like e, uh, Eli uh, made uh, over twelve hundred bucks on uh, last trade here. So uh, <laughs> that was yeah, nice, that's nice, nice, nice work. <laughs> nice work. Um, yeah. So uh, no, I that's a, 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 a pretty pretty um, a good overview. Uh, you know. Uh, there's a lot of resources on the website, uh, if, a lot of videos, uh, you know, the recorded webinars as, as well as other webinars that go through this phenomena that I was covering, like a lot of the market uh, phenomena I was covering, um, uh, reading the order flow here and the structure of the order flow, uh, it's, they're, they're there on the website. Yeah, no, there's, there, there's one good, there, there's many good things, but one of the, one of the real cool things about uh, what you guys offer is it's a complicated thing if you don't take advantage of the education and there's plenty of education around it right so one of the things that we try to do is I try to simplify it into these bite-sized chunks but if you are one of these guys that really likes to dig into the granular details this is your tool right I can't always do that because you know we run a room and all that stuff in real time but if you really like, uh, if you really like to get into the granular details, if you're an engineer type of mindset, this is the thing for you. You can go as granular in detail as you'd like. Exactly, and you know that's that's where um, uh, you know for for people that um, are order flow traders who have studied the dome for a long time, this is a blessing for them. I mean, uh, they they love it. Uh, we've had many, many traders and many floor traders uh, come to us and say, wow, for the first time they can read the auction like they used to in the pit. Uh, they can they can visualize it because, you know, book map is so visual. Um, j just like that. Um, but, um, uh, uh, you know, if uh, or if you're involved in the HFT environment, um, you know, you, you can you can take this thread a lot further. But you don't need to. I mean, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, simply look at some of your higher levels of interest and look at the order flow around it. That, 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 that in, in that, what you just said in a nutshell is, is basically what we do. We take a look at these higher volume nodes around our support resistance zones and we pull the trigger. And then when it doesn't go our favor, we get out quick. And when we, because of the confidence that we have in your tool and what we're looking at, we run these to big targets. We had... We had a small loser today, and then we had a three-to-one risk-reward trade that got us out of the hole. And that's you know, and then we started talking to you, and so it was a really cool, you know, oh, cool. It's, it's a very cool tool. So. Oh, great. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Jason. Uh, you know, a pleasure. A pleasure to be here, uh, and a uh, nice opportunity to talk to your group. Yeah, well, we certainly appreciate it, and we need to do this more often because this is a really cool tool, and maybe we could set up, uh, we'll do some little production here on the fly. Maybe we could set up uh, modules that we could talk about different aspects of the tool and, and, and do those kinds of things as we move into the future. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. We, we would uh, we'd love to be uh, take part in it. Awesome, very cool. All right, well, Bruce, thank you so much for your time today and for everybody else. Thank you for hanging around with us, and sorry about the initial... Uh, the initial snafus on getting you into this thing today. Um, oh, no so problem. Just a little, yeah, and so just a little bit of a housekeeping note. Um, use that link. Um, I, if you weren't able to stay for the whole thing or you're just coming in late or, you know, if you're not here, you don't hear this. But I'm going to – I'll, I'll – uh, it'll be tomorrow, but I'll get it uh, produced and up on the site. So. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jason. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Have a good day, everybody else. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Take care.